Um, thank you for uh, Dr. Kono Machato's introduction. Uh, hi, everybody. Today I'm going to talk about using a number matched method to assess um, the privacy data disclosure in here. Uh, my mentor is Dr. Satin Jiang, and um, as you introduced before, I'm a third year PhD candidate uh, in the Department of Statistics uh, at Indiana University. Uh, so, what motivates our project here? Uh, sometimes when we do the medical research, we collect the data, and usually this kind of data um, contains categorical variables and continuous variables. And before we release this kind of data, we would want to process the, uh, the data. Like we have to remove the um, uh, sensitive information or the explicit identifiers. And once the data is released, the intruders, uh, like the hospitals or the uh, insurance companies, they would want to match um, their client's record to a target group in this data set. And if the probability that they can match the record uh, to this target group is high, uh, that means this person's record can be easily identified. And uh, that puts that this uh, person uh, at a really high risk. So um, the higher this probability is, uh, the higher this risk is. And that is why this probability is constantly used as a measure of the risk. Uh, and therefore, we need to um, build up an accurate estimation of such kind of probability. Um, so far, people have been transforming um, continuous variables. They either um, group the variables or define the, the continuous variables, like um, high level, medium level, or uh, uh, a low level. And further, they place strong assumptions on the distribution, like they assume the uh, distribution should follow a gamma distribution or a Poisson distribution. Um, but we don't want to uh, group uh, continuous variables because um, grouping continuous variables always loses information. Uh, so we want to keep the data as raw as possible. And uh, in statistics, there has been a model that measures the that estimates the probability, but that model places a strong assumption on the um, on the independency structure between the continuous variables, between the discrete variables, and between the discrete and continuous variables. And once again, uh, we don't want to place such kind of arbitrary assumption. And that makes our uh, joint probability density function a really complex one. And this is the area that has not been touched yet. So uh, I'm not going to go into details of the formula of my model, and I'm not going to show the tedious uh, proof here. But I'm, I want to point out uh, the working here. Our model consists mainly consists two parts. One is a proportion uh, estimation. Another one is a kernel density estimation. And in this kernel density estimation, there has, there is a bandwidth matrix that needs to be decided. Uh, so that this kernel density, the KDE method, is um, accurate. And during this internship, I proved uh, that our estimation is asymptotically unbiased, and the variance um, has uh, the, the variance is founded. Um, and having this two properties proved, uh, I also show that um, our estimation um, uh, shows normality. Um, because we have proven that the normality here, uh, we can further build up the confidence interval later. Um, and I also provided a, an optimal solution to choose the bandwidth matrix so that this KDE is uh, more accurate. So in order to convince you guys, um, I did some simulations and I'm gonna show you some of them here. Uh, in one of these simulations, I uh, set the two bivariate variables. That means uh, the data would be uh, divided into four subgroups, and within each subgroup, uh, there are three continuous variables. Um, and these variables should follow a uh, multi-dimensional Gaussian distribution uh, whose covariance metrics um, do not always have non-zero elements on the open diagonal parts. So that means uh, when we look at um, these points into, uh, in a 3D uh, space, we would expect to see that uh, these points would uh, form some kind of like an ellipsoid here. So the first row here are uh, two pictures uh, from the real distribution 
Um, and the second row here is our simulation. Uh, we used the estimated uh, probability density function, and we used the Monte Carlo method here to simulate our data. And as can be seen here, uh, our simulation generally recover uh, the, pre the real uh, distribution of the four group structure is preserved here. Um, another way to generally compare the um, the estimation and the real and the real uh, density here uh, is that uh, is by comparing the contours here on each plane on the x y plane, x a plane, and y z plane, and as you can see, the contours generally agree with each other. Uh, we calculated the uh, ratios between our estimated probability density uh, and the real density, and we expect to see the ratios to be around one, uh, because that is an indicator uh, that our estimation is close to the real density. Uh, and as can be seen here, um, both of the previous method and our methods show ratios that are kind of weakly around one here, uh, but my method has a uh, shorter, um, narrow range here. So that is indicator that our method outperforms the pre previous one. Um, uh, as mentioned before, we proved the normality and we can therefore build up the confidence interval of the estimation. Um, the graphic here, the, the, the blue line here is the real density. And um, in this confidence interval curve here, we can see that my method either um, completely covers of the real density, or it is closer to the uh, real density. Uh, and another way uh, to compare the performances here is by looking at the box plots. Um, and my method almost always covers the real density, um, but in the previous method fails to do so uh, in two major areas. So in our future work, um, I'm planning to apply this theory with uh, data that is collected from the real world, uh, and I want to further compare uh, my, the, the proposed bandwidth matrix that uh, I, I, uh, I found during this internship uh, with the other bandwidth uh, the other people have proposed before. And um, once again, I want to thank you, Dr. Sassin Jiang, and special thanks goes to uh, John Ji, who has helped me so much. Uh, with checking in my proofs during this entire internship. Well, I'm ready to uh, take questions from now. Thank you. Uh, I hope I can. Uh, you mentioned uh, how you use that in the experiment on real data. That is my uh, in work, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, I rank the real, I rank this uh, the distributions, um, I, I rank the samples by the real density. So the um, bigger the real density is, the bigger that the rank is. So when you look at, so, yeah. Yeah, so I simulated like uh, uh, 500, uh, no, no, 1,000 1, 1, samples, and I calculated their real density, and we ranked the samples by the uh, real density. 